Hello and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 2.02. And in this lesson, we're going to be talking about external audio interfaces and how to hook those up with Bitwig. In the last video, we took a look at how easy it is to set up Bitwig with the built-in output of your computer. And really, when you open up Bitwig for the first time, you're going to be given a series of choices if you have something already plugged in to choose from, or of course, you can always go with the built-in output. But I think the first question we need to ask ourselves is what exactly is an audio interface and what are some choices that we have and why would we make some of the choices that we would make assuming we want to go ahead and get an audio interface. So an audio interface at its most basic level is I'll call it a box that allows you to have additional inputs and outputs that your computer in and of itself lacks. And audio interfaces, they range anywhere from under $100 to an upwards of $2,000. And there are plenty of great resources on the web that will go into interfaces in much more depth than we're going to do. But I just thought I'd give you a few pictures and show you a few examples of some audio interfaces that are out there today. Starting with the MacBook Pro itself, uh, this is a computer I'm using. This isn't actually the same model. This one looks like it has two headphone inputs, but most of them are only going to have one. So on a MacBook Pro, for example, this right here, if you can see where my mouse is circling, is where the microphone input is located. So when you're recording from your MacBook Pro and you want to record into something like Bitwig, it's very easy. Um, and this is where the source is going to be coming from. So you don't want to be making sounds like back here behind your computer because it's not really going to pick it up very clearly. And to be honest, the input on the MacBook Pro isn't that terrible, like especially if you're just getting like some ambient sounds or you're jangling your keys and you want to put that into a production. Uh, the quality is not going to be that bad and you can really manipulate the audio further from there. And I've had pretty good results doing that. Obviously, your other option is for output. And the output is there's only one output on this computer. And I think it all comes from back here. There's only like one channel. This is the built-in speakers, and over here is where you can plug in your headphones. Now, there's no spot here for me to plug in speakers or for me to like plug in a synthesizer for an input or a guitar, etc. So what do I need? I'm going to need an audio interface if I want to do that. And this is a picture from a blog on DubSpot where I think they might have been talking about audio interfaces. This just gives you an idea of what a digital um, audio interface is capable of. So you can see here that there's outputs in the back and that's where the speakers are going out from. There's a headphones in the front, meaning that there's a multi output option. So you could have output channels one and two going to your speakers and then like an output three and four going to your headphones. I'll show you guys that in just a second. There's also a instrument cable spot for you to plug in a guitar. You can plug in a microphone using XLR cables. Looks like a CDJ has been attached. There's a MIDI component to this as well, and all of that can feed into the computer. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at that. This is the exact same interface that you see in that picture. And so what are all these things? Well, here's the first level, which is the USB. And audio interfaces will typically plug into your computer in two ways. One is either by USB or by Firewire, at least in any sort of grade that anyone watching this video is going to probably need. The differences between USB and FireWire aren't as extreme as they once were. It really all has to do with this, the speed. So we know USBs are getting quicker and quicker, and maybe eventually there'll be like USB 3.0 audio interfaces that will go much quicker than FireWire. But this is really more of a latency issue in the speed of which your audio is going to get into the computer and the speed by which it's going to be outputted back to you. This 48V, if you're curious, this is for what's known as phantom power. In some microphones, they need more power to amplify the signal coming into them. And specifically, condenser microphones are going to need that. So this particular box has a button you can click. And by clicking that button, you're going to supply the microphone uh, inputs right here with the extra power needed, the phantom power. Here's a spot for MIDI. And we'll talk more about that in a future video. And then here is where we have our main um, balanced inputs and outputs. So in the case of this balanced in here, we could maybe have like a synthesizer that's stereo. And so we could plug it in right there. And so we'd have our stereo in. 
coming through. And then below we have our outputs and these are the main outputs. So outputs one and two. So we could have um, our speakers going through quarter inch TRS cables, balanced cables. And then we could also have a second set of speakers. Like if we want to have, let's say we we're doing a live show and we had our main speakers that are going out into our room, we could plug those into one and two, and then we could have monitor speakers in three and four that are pointed towards us if we're DJing, so we can get a sense for what we're hearing, um, also what the audience is hearing, but directly to you. On the front of this panel is where you can plug your inputs in, and there's a difference between um, a line in and an instrument in. You can click to make the difference here, and you can tell that this is going to be adaptable for both a regular instrument and then for an XLR for a, a microphone input as well. A simple little gain knob here that you can tweak to try to make sure you're not going in too hot but also not too low. Here's a monitoring volume and if you know you're going to use this to monitor um, certain signals coming in and out of the audio interface box. I'm not actually 100% sure what you'd use this monitor for. I guess if you have your inputs in and you want to hear how loud it is, you would be uh, messing with this monitor here to try to set those levels independent of everything else that's going on. And then last but not least, you have a spot for headphones. And you can see there's a 1, 2, and a 3, 4 icon here. And that's going to correspond to what channel your headphones are going out of. So whether that's channels 1 and 2, which would then sync up exactly with the masters or three and four which you could sync up with like a monitor pair of speakers so that's a very standard audio interface and it's one that could be quite usable for most of you the question you have to ask yourself is what do you actually need your audio interface to do at the most basic of levels we have this like behringer u control which allows for one input source and one output source so even if you plug your headphones in here, it's not like there's a separate three and four. So whatever you have your headphones plugged in, it's going to be playing exactly the same as what you have in your output. But if you just have one set of pretty simple monitor speakers, this is really all you're going to need. And you could plug them in through the output here, plug into the computer, and off you go. You've got your sound outputting there. A little bit more advanced is an M-Audio Fast Track. So you can see we have a line output, just one output channel again, one, two, and only one input source, or excuse me, and the headphones are only gonna also be going through one and two uh, for the outputs. And then we have a couple of inputs. So we have a microphone input here, and then we have an instrument input. But if we wanted something that's stereo, we really can't do it with this M-Audio fast track. Let's move on to something else a little bit more complicated. This is what I have. This is the Duet by Apogee. It's only for the Mac, but this has a couple of pretty cool features to it. It has two inputs, but each of those are mono inputs, or if you add those together, you could have one stereo input, so a one and a two, and then you have two different channels of output. So it's a two input, four output audio um, interface. And I'll show you how I have mine set up at the end of this video. But for right now, that's all you need to know. And you're saying, where are all the plugs? How do you plug your um, inputs and output sources in? Well, with the Duet, you have this thing called a breaker cable. And that plugs into the interface. And then right here is where we have our inputs. And we have our outputs. And this is where we could plug in our headphones. So when I say four output, I mean there are like four channels we can use but there's only going to be the two cables that we can plug into, and they actually make an additional box for this. Uh, going on to something a little more complicated, I just thought I'd show this to you because chances are if you're really going to go deep in this field, I would probably recommend this interface right now, maybe wait a month or something, um, but this is Universal Audio, and they're a company that makes really, really high-end mixing, mastering, effects, plugins. And they also have just plugins for, you know, creative uses as well, not just in the mixing and the mastering stage. And their plugins run on their own DSP, so their own digital signal processing, meaning that if you buy one of these UAD audio interfaces, like the Apollo, for example, that's like the high end of, of their interfaces that they offer, you have access to that DSP and you can run all their plugins through their own software and through their system. 
and you don't have to worry about taxing all of the resources on your computer. It's really a brilliant design. However, it comes with a price and it's quite expensive if we just look at their plugins. Oftentimes they'll have things on sale, but um, some of their plugins are going to go upwards of $200 or $300. Let's see, maybe it's gonna load up here in a second. We can just jump ahead though and I can show you the interface I might recommend. The Apollo Twin is going to have that universal audio technology to it and it's gonna have a few inputs and a few outputs. I think it's very, very similar to what we see with the Duet, only it does come with that additional uh, UAD processing power. And so here are some of their plugins. These are compressor plugins, 300, 350. Some are more expensive than others, but really these are top of the line plugins and top of the line interfaces. Uh, this was just recently released and right now I think it may only be available for Mac, but give them time. I'm sure they'll release something for PC. And even if they don't, um, just an incredible and sort of consumer grade of their more expensive interface, which is you'll find in many professional studios today from you know some of the top mixers to just people who um, their own home studios can't afford all of the true hardware gear. But if they get one of these Apollo interfaces and buy some of these UAD plugins, they do basically have a full-fledged professional recording studio. So you can see this is really a step up from what we've looked at with like this M-Audio box. We now have all of these outputs, all of these inputs, some microphone inputs right here. And then it's also going to have the DSP um, universal audio technology as well. And you can see that this one is gonna connect via Firewire as opposed to connecting with USB. So the questions you have to ask yourself is a very simple one. What do I need? And if you're planning to record full on bands and stuff, you need to find an audio interface that has multiple inputs and probably has a couple sets of outputs. So that way you're able to monitor in, in a set of headphones and also then be playing back on speakers. But it all depends on what you need. For me, the Duet is fine. I really wish I would have known that they were releasing this. I need to stay up on my audio technology homework because I would have waited before getting the um, Duet. I would have waited and got the Apollo. But all I really need is something that's durable, that's easy to transport. So the Duet is very, it's pretty sturdy and it has a good reputation. The microphone preamps, which is an important part to consider, all I need are two microphone inputs for the most part and that one stereo input. So I have a couple of synthesizers that are stereo synthesizers. So I need to have the flexibility of plugging that in so I can get um, that stereo signal. But at the same time, I record a podcast and for that, there's just two of us and all I need are these two inputs so that I can be have my channel recording and I can have uh, my partner's channel recording and then I'm able to process those independently. And for outputs, this works great for me, especially if it's a DJ situation because I can send my master out through the main outputs, the one and two, and then I can route my headphones to go through three and four. So for me, the Duet works absolutely perfectly. There are other digital, um, there are other audio interfaces that will work just as well as this, but they're just gonna be a little bit different and the prices are going to vary as well. So sometimes people ask and they wonder, why would you pay an additional $200 for the Apogee Duet when you could get another audio interface like the M-Audio FastTrack Pro or some audio interface by Sapphire or by Akai, um, excuse me, by Focusrite? And my answer to that is the devil's in the details on those things. Number one, reputation. Um, I had a FastTrack Pro, I've had a couple of them and they've both broken on me literally a few days like after the warranty would expire. And it's not like I was treating them that badly. They just broke and there was nothing I could do about it. It was like when I would plug in the outputs, I would get no sound or the USB power died and I'd buy a new USB cable. And obviously there was just something horribly wrong with it. I've had no problems with the Duet so far. It seems pretty sturdy. It's pretty stable. It has a great uh, headphone preamp in here. So out of the headphones, it sounds great. The sound out of the speakers sounds really good and the preamps are super clean. They're very like digital preamps. 
And you might be wondering what's inside these boxes. And the truth is one of the main things in here is that analog to digital and digital to analog conversion processes that we talked about before. And people will spend extra money to get a really good A to D or D to A conversion. And the Duet has a pretty good reputation for that. I'm not saying it's the best because this is only like $400. But as you go up the line, uh, this is like $600 up to like $2,000 for the Apollo. You're going to find that the quality of those converters, the quality of the preamps, and the number of outputs and inputs, etc., is all going to be different. But at the most basic of level, every single audio interface is trying to do the same thing. And what that is, it's very simple. It's giving you more flexibility of what you can bring into your computer. So let's take a look now at the Apogee Duet and the software that comes bundled along with it. It's called the Maestro. And you can see from just bringing it up when I'm recording, my level is coming up here. I can control my microphone level with this knob, and I also can do it on the hardware. Either way is fine. And for right now, you can tell that this one's not even working. So if I wanted to, it's not on, but I could turn it all the way down to zero just to be safe. And then I have the choice of either working with microphone level or with instrument level, which is quite different. And you better make sure that you have either the mic or the instrument selected uh, just to be safe there. And the outputs, here's where it gets interesting. Now, you're not going to see anything coming out because nothing is playing at the moment. But what I have set up is my speakers right here and my headphones both going out to one and two. The reason for that is because I need to hear what's going on through my headphones when I'm making these videos and I'm processing sound. But if I was in a DJ situation, I would change the output of my headphones to three and four. And then inside of the actual software in Bitwig, I would route it so that I could have like a Q channel going through three and four as opposed to one and two. But just for the example, so we can set both of these up, I'm going to set my monitoring speakers that I have plugged in out to three and four. I don't have them on, so it's not going to make the biggest difference in the world. But I just want you guys to see how easily it is you can kind of change the channels of the outputs. And this is going to vary with whatever sort of interface you get. But for anyone that comes with like a software like this uh, Apogee Duet and the Maestro or Maestro, I'm not sure how you're supposed to say that, you can very easily route those outputs and change some of the settings on the inputs, either on the actual device itself or here in the software. Just some other sort of options I have. They give me meters, which may or may not work a little bit better than your meters you have inside of the programs. So sometimes it's good because you know that this is actually monitoring what's going in. And that's very, very helpful. Uh, a couple other nice features. There's a soft limiter on this. So if I was to go way up into the red and, and actually clip, it will limit that a little bit for me at the source. So we won't get that really, really nasty digital distortion. So how do we set up something like this inside of Bitwig? Very easy. I'm going to go back to my options and my preferences go back to audio. And here with my input device and my output device, this is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna keep my, my input device to built-in microphone so I can record there. But I'm gonna change my output device to my Duet USB. And immediately from doing that, from going from my built-in output, I only am gonna have those two, two choices, to my Duet, I immediately get those four. And what I could do here is I could add a second set of outputs. So I could add my speakers, and we already saw that I set that to three and four. If I wanted to, I could change my role here to headphones. It really isn't gonna make that big of a difference, to be honest. But I could add a set of speakers, and I could say that's going for my stereo output too, and let's, let's rename these just so it's clear. And it will, all these preferences will be saved for you, by the way. So these are going out to KRK Rocket 8s. And my headphones are, what are my brand of headphones? Whatever, I'll just call them phones. <laughs> and then I can click OK. I'm also going to have my choice of sample rate up here, which is interesting because I have the same choice on the Maestro. And I always think it's safe to go into um, your software and to sync it up just to be 100% sure that you're getting the highest quality possible. So right here, I have this set to uh, 48. 
but I could always go in and I just recently went in there and changed it from my system setup. So if I want to go higher, I could. Good to just have those things matched up to be safe. And we do have those matched up, which is perfect for me. So now let's kind of test this out. Let's do what we did before. Let's, let's add ourselves in a polysynth. Make sure everything is working properly. And now this time you should finally be able to hear what's going on. So I'll hit the caps lock button and I'll play a couple notes. All right, we're finally hearing some audio. And the interesting thing now is let's try to, let's record. So this has worked out really well. I can go to the info view here. And with the info view, I'm gonna be able to set where I am recording from. So right now it says no info or no input. I'm gonna change that to my mono input which is really just my built-in input on my computer. And then if I select monitor, we're gonna get this really strange echoey effect happening right now. Obviously this is not ideal, so I'll turn that off. I don't really like using monitor like ever. It's good to use it when you're setting your levels. So if you have a musician playing something on the guitar, you can set your levels and get that all right. But for us, uh, I think we'll turn monitor off so you don't go crazy. And now if I hit the record button, record enable, let's do a little bit of recording. So now we've got that in here. I can solo it, I can play it back. Let's do a little bit of recording. And it's all worked perfectly. I could do the same thing and I could set my preferences to go through my Duet USB. And now suddenly you can see it's giving me these like two choices. That's not actually what I want though. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna actually delete this. I'm gonna add a mono source and I'm gonna call this mic one. I'm actually right now going through microphone one. So everything should be in order there. I can click okay. And now you see this is telling me this is not configured. I'm going to just create another audio track here. I'll record enable that one, change it to mic one. And uh, right now my monitor is actually set to on, but because of solo, we're not hearing anything. So now this is actually, the echo is occurring like almost instantaneously and it's giving me this really bizarre kind of noise in my headphones right now. So let's turn that monitoring off again and we can record once more. Recording let's do through- a little bit of recording. Way to not be conscious of that. All right, so I'm going to stop this, delete it, do it again mute that channel this time and now let's go ahead and get this all going let's recording a little bit of recording with my microphone in my apogee duet okay cool so now what i can do is we can listen to the difference I might have to turn this one up to kind of match what we're gonna get the output here, but you'll hear the difference of what it sounds like to record through my computer's input versus through the Apogee Duet. So let's take a listen to first the computer. Let's do a little bit of recording. Like I said, it actually sounds quite clean. And now through the Duet. Recording, recording with my microphone in my Apogee Duet. So obviously it would make a lot of sense for me to go back into my preferences and to turn up uh, the level on my microphone on my duet, but you can hear just such a huge difference in the quality. And that's why people will spend thousands and thousands of dollars on different microphones and different preamps to try to get those unique, that unique character, that timbre, that indescribable character of the sound. So I think that's going to do it for our video on audio interfaces and setting them up inside of Bitwig. Of course, if you have an audio interface that has tons and tons of inputs and outputs, you'll see them all come down here and you can route all of these in a variety of ways. And if I go into right here into my uh, studio inputs and outputs, you find that again all the way on the bottom here to the right. We have the choice of what we wanna use as our output monitor. So if I don't wanna use my phones, I can click and use the speakers just like that. So it's, it's a great system and it will require a little bit of playing around. When we go and do our DJ setup, which is coming up in a few videos, I will walk you through exactly a setup that I would be using if I was in like a DJ type situation. 
So I hope that's been helpful for you guys and I'll catch you again in the next lesson.